This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Good morning and God bless you today. We welcome you to East Juliet Baptist Church and pray that you are blessed by this morning's message. We have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. for youth and adults and church services every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. On the fifth Sunday of the month, we have breakfast and Sunday school. We also have Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And once a month, on Wednesday evening at 6.15 p.m., we have a prayer meeting. We are so glad that you've joined us this morning. Thank you again for joining us at East Juliet Baptist Church. Well, um, I hope you brought your swords this morning. I really do. I got a good message for you. I, I held up the press for a while before it could print. But I'm not just going to come in here and just give you a message and let you go home and, and it not be led by the Spirit. I, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. And sometimes the Lord will change it on me or, or whatever. But I'd rather know that we're hearing what God wants us to hear than something I picked for you to hear. Amen? Yeah. So if you brought your swords this morning, stand with me. Turn to... We're going to be in, in, in the book of Ezekiel. I like Ezekiel. I, I like how God called him the son of man. When he addressed Ezekiel, it was always the son of man. And we're in chapter 8. We're going to read the entire chapter. And listen, this is this is to the church. This is, God's, God told Ezekiel, he put the spirit on him, took him by a lot of his hair and pulled him and said, this is what I want you to see. This is to you, Ezekiel. And uh, I love the Lord. Uh, when, boy, when he addresses it, he addresses it. Amen. Amen. Uh, here we go. And may God bless the reading of his word and all God's children said. Amen. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah, sitting before me, that the hand of the Lord fell upon me there. Then I looked, and there was lightness, like the appearance of fire from the appearance of his waist, and downward fire, and from his waist and upward, like the appearance of brightness, like the color of amber. He stretched out the form of a hand, and took me by a lock of my hair, and the Spirit lifted me, up between earth and heaven and brought me a vision of God to Jerusalem to the door of the north gate of the inner court where the seat of the image of jealousy was which provokes to jealousy and behold the glory of God of Israel was there like the vision that I saw on the plain then he said to me son of man Lift your eyes toward uh, the north. So I lifted my eyes towards the north, and there north of the altar gate was the image of jealousy in the entrance. Furthermore, he said to me, Son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations that the house of Israel commits here? To make me go far away from my sanctuary. That is heart-wrenching. Now turn again, you will see greater abominations. So he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, there was a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, Son of man, dig into the wall. And when I dug into the wall, there was a door. And he said to me, Go in and see the wicked abominations which they are doing there. So I went in, and I saw, and there every sort of creeping thing, abomination beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed all around on the walls. And there stood before them seventy men of the elders of the house of Israel. In their midst stood Jezreelah, the son of Satan. Each man had a censer in his hand. A thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in a room of his idols. For he say to the Lord does not see. Us the Lord has forsaken the land. And he said to me, turn again. And you will see greater abominations that they are doing. 
So he brought me to the door at the north gate of the Lord's house, to the my dismay, women were sitting there weeping for Tomas. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Turn again, I'll show you greater abominations than these. So he brought me into the inner court. That's the very center of the sanctuary, by the way, of the Lord's house. And there at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the main altar, were about 25 men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east. And they saw and was worshiping the sun toward the east. They were worshiping the sun, not, in other words, they had their back turned to God. And he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? It is trivial. It, it, is it a trivial thing to the house of Judah to commit these abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. Then they have returned to provoke me to anger. Indeed, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore I will act in fear. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, does he say you'll hear them, Sister Denise? No. no. He says, I will not hear them. I will not hear them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that you're true, that you're just, that you're not like us. Uh, Lord God, right is right, wrong is wrong, white is white, black is black. Uh, and we just... We can't hide from you, Lord God. We hide, but you see. And I love you this morning, Lord God, and I praise your holy name. And thank you for this word that you gave me last night, Lord Jesus. Uh, open, open our eyes, open our hearts, our ears, our minds, our bodies, and our souls. We're subject to you, Lord God. You're not subject to us. And we need to remember that. It's in your precious and holy name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Now, I remember as a kid, I used to love to play hide and seek. Anybody else play hide and seek? Hide and seek? I loved it. And I used to be, Robert used to get so mad at me, Sister Kim, because he never could find me. And he never picked up on how I was getting. You know why he couldn't find me? Because I was following him everywhere he was going. I was right behind him the whole time, but he didn't know it. He was looking all this way, and I was right behind him the whole time. And then when he would say, I'm, I said, I'm, I quit, I'm going back, I'd take off running, and he'd think I was hiding there, so the next time he was going to go there to look, I, would never, I was always behind him. That's my point. Hey, yeah, man, tell you, I got him every time on And And then my little uh, first cousin, Tammy, uh, I showed her how to do it. I told her, I tried to have to cheat. But all of us played hide and seek, didn't we? And it was exciting, and some 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 kids, they think because they got their eyes closed, Sister Melvin, you can't see them, but <laughs> you really can. Uh, you can. They're right there, but they think you can't because they're hiding with their eyes closed. Um, and we're naive like that. We really are. Because a lot of things that we do, we thank God don't see. And He does. We just read in Ezekiel chapter 8, all the stuff that was going on in God's house. Everywhere you looked, they were sinning. Everywhere you looked, something was going on. And he, he addressed the elders. 20, 25 of them were standing at the altar, my Max. At the altar with their back to God. That's what he was saying. You're worshiping it. the sun and your back is to me. You're standing at the altar. You're hiding from me. But I, I like the one with the hole in the wall, Sister Cam. It started off with a little bitty peephole, right? But what was behind that? A door. A door. You had to move some stuff out of the way to see what was really going on. And then once you, that little hole turned into a door, when the door opened, there were 75 elders in there worshiping false idols. But what broke my heart about this whole passage more than anything, Butch, is when God said, Son of Man, they have made it for me not to want to be in my sanctuary. 
They were running, in other words, God said, you've run me out. You've chased me out of my sanctuary that you built to worship me in. We, we hide, Brother James, we hide our sin, but we forget God seeks us out. What, what, all the way back to the beginning with Adam and Eve, did he not? Bible says that, that, that God came, uh, Sir Thomas, walking in the garden in the cool of the evening. And said, Adam, where art thou? He was seeking, he was seeking Adam, Mad Max. God seeks us because he loves us. We're his children. Did you not, did you not, Sir Thomas, make sure you knew where Jake was at all times when she was a child? You and if you didn't know, you seek to find out where she was, her and Ryan. Amen. That's what parents do. You will seek and find your child. Amen. If you're a decent parent. Or if you've had enough, you hope you can't find them, so they'll leave you alone. Amen? Ain't going to happen. I'm just going to tell you, it never happens. And by the way, you never stop being a parent. But here's my point. Here's where I'm going with this. Adam said, I'm hiding, Lord. And, and, and he, why are you hiding? He said, because I'm naked. Who told you you was naked, Adam? Have you took of the fruit? Blame game city from that conversation on. He, Lord, made me t take of the fruit. And then he, notice that while Adam was saying what he was saying, and then Eve said what she said, God didn't say a word. He let them get it on out, didn't he? He let them confess what they'd done. Or what they were saying. <laughs> Somebody else did. Blame game. Here's how it goes. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. He didn't have a leg to stand on. That's what happened. Amen. But my point is, he let him get it out. He let him think that he didn't know what really went on. We do the same thing. As a church, as a child of God, we think that whatever we're doing, and I thought about this for last night, I was like, <laughs> You really, if we hear it, Sir Thomas, I've preached it, you, I, I've been preached to a numerous times where the pastor would say, well, God knows everything you're doing. Amen? We, we hear it, but when you really meditate on that, when you really meditate on that, you'll understand it in a whole new depth. I was in my bed last night, setting up, studying, and out of, no, out of just out of nowhere, I just I bluntly just, Lord, you really do know every single thing I'm doing. Uh, even if it's good or bad, Sister Melba, he knows. And I'm thinking, my soul, I started doing some rewind. You know, you hit re remember if you know what cassette is or a B8 track, you always had rewind. You want to hear it over again or hear a certain part and, you know, jig jogging. They, then they got the ones where you could do it quick on a cassette. I started rewinding. How much stuff have I done that I think that, thought that God didn't know I'd done? Or I didn't even care if he knew. Right. Because that's basically what, what there's, what's going on in Ezekiel chapter 8. They don't care. They've even said God don't, God don't see us. He's, he's abandoned us. He's not here. He don't care. Yes, he does. I want you to know God cares. That's why he seeks us out. Olivia, that's why he lets you know when you've done something wrong. That's why he's there before you do it. Don't say God's not there, Sir Thomas. That's what's making you say, I really shouldn't do this, but... That conviction falling on you is God being there. He's never not there until you commit the sin. Then he goes. He will be no part of sin. If he left his own son hanging on the cross, why would he hang around with us while we're sinning? He won't. After you overpower the spirit of conviction, then you've set God aside, Sister Kim, and now you're acting on your own. Would you agree? Once you have overpowered, let me say that again, 
Once you've overpowered, let me rephrase that. Once we have overpowered the, the conviction of the Holy Ghost, Miss Lena, we're acting alone. We become a free agent. We are now a free agent of sin. We'll do it. We'll go on and get another with Bruce. Up to Bruce Butch, Bruce Wayne. And then, I see you look like this one, by the way, Bruce Lane, uh, with that, uh, or well, Don Johnson with that tan jacket, brother. You were shining coming in this morning. But anyway, we'll, we'll commit the act. We are free agents. And guess what else happens? We're also free agents when the consequence comes. But, but let's say, have you ever, now I'm just, you got to be honest with yourself this morning with this whole message. Remember, God's pointing out things in our lives that we're doing wrong, that we think He don't see, that He really does. Can anybody in this sanctuary this morning honestly say, or whoever's going to be listening to the podcast, that you have never, that you didn't know you were sinning? Now, if you haven't been saved, I'll give you that. I totally agree. But if you have truly been saved, there's no way God would let you commit a sin without convicting you first. Amen. There's just no way, Matt Max. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'll argue with whoever wants to about that. I'll show you scripture to back it. Paul mentioned numerous times you knew what you were doing while you were doing it. Why? Because you were because he says, because of the anointing or because of the Holy Ghost himself. That's what the helper, or he would say the helper. He said it numerous times, especially in First and Second Corinthians. There is no way we can honestly say, I didn't know it was a sin. Unless, now I'm going to go, there is one exception to me, how I feel, and maybe I'm wrong, but if you don't know God's Word. If you didn't know that that particular thing is in there and that was what you were supposed to be doing but you wasn't, I'll give you that. I will. If it's something that you have been doing your entire life, you may not even felt conviction, have it yet, because God hasn't pinpointed that sin yet. He's not going to come in and just clean everything out. He's, he's going to work on it one thing at a time with you in your spiritual walk. Yeah. He'll get you through one level of one wrong, and then you get to climb another one. And, and if you're like me, you, I've, I've made it up six, seven, eight rungs and fall all the way back down. Number three, number four, have to start over again. You know, because I'm just idiot. I'm dumb. But I want us to understand this morning, you can't play hide and go seek with God. There's no way to do it. Now here's the good part of the message. Here's what I love. God never ever left the children of Israel. What did he say? Well, even in punishment, in order for me to say, I don't care what you did, I'm done with you, I'm gone. And my back's turned to you and I never come back. Then that, yeah, I'll give you that, but that's not what happens here. See, there's a consequence for all our actions. And the children of Israel, all these elders and these people in the church, was fixing to get it. What, and you can read it right there at the end. Uh, he said, I will have no mercy. Why would God say that? You're asking, you just told me God loves me. He seeks me. Why would he say he has no mercy? When you, listen, the Bible also says it's a fearful, fearful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. Amen. And that would be our God. Well, the Keith, he'll let us go and go and go, and then the fury shows up. The, in other words, the consequence for our action. We're a child of God. As, did your parents, maybe some, I would say they, this new generation, their parents didn't do nothing to them. But did you ever get away with anything you tried to roll with in your household when you was a child? I don't know how many eyes in the back of my mother's hand she had, but it was more than one. You didn't pull nothing over on her. And Dad had let it sit there and build up. Just build up. <laughs> 
so that theory could be real theory and just build up. And while he was giving you that theory, he went back to all the others and said, this is for this and this is for that. You thought I forgot about it, didn't you? Or he would come in there after we were asleep in the bed and just wake us up whipping. Say, yeah, you thought I forgot, didn't you? Now, I don't know what his purpose was behind that. I would never do that to one of my young ones. But I know one thing. <laughs> I never forgot what I got for doing what I did. Amen? Bible says, say the rod spoiled the child. I understand that. Well, you don't think as a child of God, you think God's going to spare the rod? God has not changed, Brother Randy. From Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22 and to 2023. God hasn't changed. We are trying to change Him. We want God to work for us. We don't want to work for God. All, all of us, in one way or another, has used and abused the cross. And then we try to play hide from God. He's all knowing. He's all seeing. Um, Hannah, it, it don't matter what time it's, it is. It, everybody else could be in bed, pretty. Everybody could be in bed. And you do something. You, you think you're the only one that knows? He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows everything. He has invested in each and every one of us. He has given you gifts. He has given you material things. He's given you every single thing you have. I mean, you got to put yourself, well, you really can't, but try to put yourself in God's shoes. If I invest everything, if you invested everything in someone and they take, just keep taking so, you know, although I, 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 I hate to do this, I do it when I'm doing marriage counseling, but I'm going to do it this morning with the church. The church is like a checking account. Now, a checking account has a beginning and an end balance. Amen? Is everybody with me? And it, in order for there to be a balance, there has to be deposits made. Amen? Or there's nothing in the checking account. Now, if you keep trying, if you keep making withdrawals and no deposits, what's going to happen? Now, when you're overdrawn, there's a what? For each and every, thank you, Sister Denise, she has run a checking account before. It's the same thing with God. Except for penalties, that penalty is for our sin. Amen? Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, Romans, I'm next, hold on, 626, right? 623. Romans 623. Romans 623. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wages is the penalty of that sin. Death is that spiritual death. Do you believe you can be dead spiritual? I've seen it. I've been it. I've been dead spiritual. It's like being out in the middle of the ocean. As Dad used to say, with no sailboat fuel. You know what that is? That's the wind that pushes the sailboat. There's nothing worse. And I've been there, Sister Melvin. Why? Because I thought God didn't know what I was doing. Well, I've got some good news for you. It's not bad news. It's good news that God knows everything we're doing, everywhere we're at. Because if there, if, and we would lie to Him if we could. I'm just going to be honest with you. But sin is sin. No matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing. He sees it. So we hide, but He sees. He comes to us, Sister Melba, because He loves us. And He knows, Brother James, that no sin will enter the kingdom of heaven. He knew we couldn't pull it off, Sister Kim, with the law. There's just no way. And for the record, they took that and butchered it and added about 300 more things to it. 
so they could make money off the people. They taxed them for their sin. Nowhere did I read in Moses' law that you was to be taxed for your sin. You know, on cigarettes and tobacco, so Thomas, there's it's what's known as a sin tax. <laughs> you get taxed. It's very still good. And it's working. But my point is, there's a penalty for our sin. And 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 we and we can't categorize sin. We do. We think, well, because you did that, you're gonna be in way more trouble. Well, the consequences is what's different. In God's eyes, sin is sin. And you're not hiding it from anybody but yourself. Because you'll never hide from God. He will seek you out. Why? Because He loves you. That's why. He wants you to do... He wants you... He's all, all the Holy Ghost is trying to do is conform us into His Son's image. Why? So that when His Son comes back, and He is, or when the, when the groom comes back for the bride like us, uh, Sunday's message, Jill or Jennifer. He's not coming after a harlot. He's not coming after a sinner. He's coming after a saint. And the only way we are saints of God, children of God, is the children of repentance, children of forgiveness, children of God's mercy, His grace, and His love. That is God seeking us out. He don't seek you to punish you. You think God gets off punishing us? Look at all the things... How long do you think, Sir Thomas, it took for all that to go on? Just right there in that one chapter of Ezekiel chapter 8. You think all that happened all of a sudden? Years, right, Sister Kim? Years God knew that was going on in His church. And He was waiting for them to repent and stop doing it. It had to start somewhere, right, with one elder. One. In each department of the church. One. This wasn't all the same people. So it, that, that's that you, you want to tell me God's not patient, Butch? You want to tell me that God's not loving and caring and seeks us to help us, not hurt us? Imagine how Ezekiel felt. It's going on right under his nose. I, well, I can tell you I know how he feels. I really can. Can you imagine him, Sister Kim, looking through the people and saying, man, that looks like a door. And God says, yeah, it's a door. Dig the wall out. That's their secret hiding place. I wonder what God's, you know, if God's looking at our people if he sees a door. I'm going to tell you something. He's coming through that door. Amen. He will come through the door. Not because he not because he wants to, although he can. Not because he's trying to prove you wrong, because he can. But all because he loves you and he wants you to stop. And how do you think he felt? Because that's what happens. Look, when we're when we're we, we all sin, Amen, Sir Thomas, Romans three twenty three. But when we ask God forgiveness, repentance means to turn and go the opposite way. By the way, it means you don't go back and start doing the same thing over. But God sees that, Sister Kim. We repent. We we head the right way, right? God's not gonna. He's not looking for no you know, closed doors on us, on those, right? But this is what this is what the, the twenty five that was in the sanctuary was doing. Their back was to the cross. They weren't facing it. They were they they weren't walking to it, Mad Max. They were walking away from it. They had walked away from it. And they was worshiping a false God. If you, that sun goddess, whew, you got to do some research on that one. If you want to know what they were worshiping, do research on the sun goddess. You're going to find out what her name is and where she was, where she originated from. It's disgusting. And that's who they were worshiping. Who are we worshiping this morning? Amen. 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Seems like we put a time on everything. How much time are you spending hiding or how much time are you spending seeking? Because if you're hiding, you're not seeking. If you're seeking, you won't be hiding. 
That's just the way it is this morning. Can I get an amen? Amen. Want y'all to stand with me? When's the last time I used to sing a song? Long time ago, back in the 90s. 1990, from the 19th century. I'm from 19th century. I used to sing a song. How long has it been? Beautiful song. And I'm going to get that song, uh, or if you can get your hands on it, I want the choir to sing that song. Oh, Sister Denise. One of the verses in that Bible, or that Bible, it's from the Bible, that song is, How long has it been since you knelt by your bed and, cry, and gave your uh, heart? Uh, how long it, since you prayed uh, to the Lord of the book? How long has it been since you got on your knees and you begged? The song is amazing. But I ask you this morning, how long has it been since you seeked the Lord your God? Or for those who the message touched this morning, you don't have to hide from God. He don't want you to hide from him. He's telling you, he's at the door, Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door that you're hiding behind, and I not. If you'll let me come through that door, I will sup with you, and you with me. In other words, I'll sit down with you, I'll chew on it with you, and then I'm going to take it away from you. seen the picture of that scripture before an actual pain in the picture there's no doorknob on Jesus' side the doorknob's on the inside there's no doorknob now he's not going to open that door by himself he's expecting you to open it and let him in now a lot of people use that scripture for salvation but it's also us trying to hide behind the door and now yeah, he he He's, he's saying, you ain't hiding. Just open the door and let me in. I can stop this. I can fix this. I can make it go away. And he can. He can make anything disappear. Amen. He's doing it every day. Even in our lives. So, the altar's open this morning. If you want to come to the altar this morning and seek God's holy face or uh, whatever it is that you feel that you need this morning, it's up here at the altar. Um, I know that uh, I've done some altar seeking last night, and I'm probably going to do it again this morning. The altar's open, beloved. I, you can't hide. There's no need to hide. He's seeked you out. He seeked you out this morning. And he's waiting up here for you this morning to come and ask him to help you with whatever it is that you're dealing with so he can remove it out of your life and change the way you think. And if you don't, then God says, I'm still behind that door, but you got to open it. Amen.